everyone. Welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is actually going to be a feathery friend of ours because we are covering the oh so wonderful kiwi. This is obviously a very, very special listener episode dedicated to Kristen, who wrote in via Instagram. So thank you so much, Kristen, for writing into the show. This episode would not be possible without you, and this podcast would not be possible for each and every one of you listening and that write into the show. If you would like to learn about a certain animal on the podcast, go ahead and either send an email to relax with animal facts at gmail.com or you can write in to relax with animal facts on Instagram as well. And we're going to go right into a request that was written by Jewel the Cat 134 on Apple Podcasts for the show. Jewel the Cat writes, Hello, since I don't have an email or Instagram account, can you do an episode on the Amur Leopard? By the way, the show's awesome. It helps me sleep. And then there's another section that says 2021 update. Still five stars, but can you try to record more often? No pressure. I hope you are having a good year and the podcast is awesome. Here's an idea for a catchphrase. Relax, sleep, listen, and learn and relax while learning. Thank you so much, Jewel the Cat, for your very, very wonderful five-star review, as well as your ideas for a catchphrase for the show. I always like reading stuff like that. In terms of recording the show more often, as some of you long-term listeners may know, when I started the podcast, I would actually record two to three times per week, not just one time a week. But now uh, it has come to a season in which it is so, so busy for me that I can only manage one time a week. But also, at the beginning of the podcast, I would record in a closet with my phone, um, as opposed to now where I am able to record with a microphone and, uh, and a laptop and things like that. So lots of things have changed for the show. Um, and one time a week is all that I can manage to put out something really quality for you guys to relax and listen to. So I hope you understand, Jewel. But thank you so much, Jewel, for writing that very wonderful message and for the request for the animal, the Amor uh, Leopard. I'll be sure that if I do that episode in the future, I will give you credit. If you want to help support the show, Leaving a review like Jewel did is just so, so helpful for the show. So if you find that the show helps you, you can help the show in return by just taking a couple, uh, couple minutes there and just leaving a five-star review for the show. So before we get into that relaxing portion, I'm just going to say where I got the facts from for the show. So I got my facts from rainbowsprings.co.nz and thedodo.com. I will be leaving both of these links in the show notes or the description there uh, on Spotify or wherever you listen so that you may learn more about them if you would like. Those websites are just so great. So no more dilly-dallying. Let us all turn our attention to where maybe we are carrying some of that tension in our bodies. Maybe it's your neck, maybe it's your head. It could be anywhere for any of us because we are just, we're all so different. So for me, while I might carry tension in my neck and in my shoulders, for some of you, maybe it'll be in your legs, it'll be in your chest, it'll be somewhere else. So just do your best to kind of realize where you feel some of that tension and try to passively just kind of relax that 
as we go into this immersive experience with me, Steph Wolf, into the forests, scrublands, and grasslands of New Zealand. So first, we're going to go over a couple of facts that make the kiwi bird truly unique. So while it is a bird, it has features more characteristic of a mammal. So the first fact is that it has very tiny wings and cannot fly. Researchers are still a bit unsure as to how they arrived in New Zealand to begin with. So that is still a mystery to be uncovered. It has loose feathers that are more like fur, and unlike other birds, the feathers molt throughout the year. So at the top of the show, I guess I could also say that they are kind of furry and also feathery at the same time. And for those of you that have not heard this term before, molt. Well, to molt, it is to shed kind of old skin, hair, maybe a shell, or in this case, for the kiwi bird, it is the shedding of uh, old feathers to make way for a new growth of feathers. It is currently the only bird in the world with nostrils at the end of its beak. Now that is truly, truly unique. So we see how the kiwi bird actually relates to us a little bit in that way. It has a very profound sense of smell, especially comparing it to other animals of similar kind. It has no tail feathers, but to make up for that, for some reason, they have whiskers, just like a cat. We are only just starting the episode, and I am already getting excited for these guys because they are so unique, it seems. They also have marrow in their bones, just like a human. And very unusually, females have two ovaries. Most birds usually have only one. So these are the characteristics that make this bird seem more like a mammal than a bird at times. Now, having marrow in its bones could be something that is contributing to their flightless nature. Many birds will have hollow bones just for the sake of density, because the lower the density of their bones, the less hard they will have to try to gain flight and sustain flight. So those are just some quick facts as to how the kiwi bird is unique in terms of birds. So we learned at the top of the show that they live in the forests, scrublands, and grasslands in New Zealand. So they will sleep in burrows, hollow logs, or under dense vegetation. It seems like so many animals that are so cool come from Australia and New Zealand. You guys have some very amazing animals. Kiwis are going to be mostly nocturnal. So this is opposed to what we are generally, except for those of us that maybe work a night shift. But for us humans, being diurnal has been more of the norm. Nocturnal means that they will be doing most of their living and hunting during the night time. So they will come out of their burrows after nightfall to forage for insects, worms, grubs, fallen fruit, and some plants as well. So while other birds we learned about, for example, in the owl episode, where some birds will be equipped with very large, powerful eyes so that they can see during the nighttime, but the kiwi says, hold on a second, I don't need that. I'm going to have instead a very well-developed sense of smell that mimics more of a mammal's olfactory senses than a bird's. So the kiwi's small eyes do not really see as well at night, so it will instead rely on its other senses, such as how it feels, smells, 
and hears in its environment. So here we see maybe that this could be an adaptation. During the day, these guys are indeed flightless, so it can be hard for them to get away from certain predators. And while before it would have to be careful of things like eagles and other aviary predators, now because New Zealand is being more and more populated with specific animals like cats and dogs and things like that, these things introduce new predators to the system. So this could be a possible adaptation for the kiwi so the kiwi could see that maybe during the nighttime it is safer to go and forage for what it needs. It will take the kiwi between 16 months to 3 years for birds to be sexually mature enough to breed. And breeding will usually occur between July and February. So these guys are on a schedule much like the rest of the animal kingdom. Now this next fact I think is super, super cool. The kiwi has one of the largest egg to body weight ratios of any bird on the planet. The egg will average about 15% of the female's body weight compared to 2% for the ostrich. And the incubation is done by the male and can take anything from 74 to 90 days on average. And when the eggs are first hatched, the belly of the chick will be swollen with yolk, which will sustain them for their first few days. And the female kiwi will grow to be larger than the males. What a cool fact. Having a large egg ratio I think is something that is very unique. Kiwi birds are among the few species that tend to live as monogamous couples and often mate for life. So monogamous is just a super fancy word of meaning one partner for life. And if you want to know the etymology of the word monogamy, it comes from ancient Greek. So monos meaning single and gamos meaning marriage. So we can see how when you combine those words, monos and gamos, it makes monogamy in the uh, early 17th century English that we now use today for monogamy. If you guys like to learn about the etymology of words as well, I can include more of those as we learn together. So during the mating season, the males and females call out to their respective significant others at night and will meet in their nesting burrows every three days. Kiwi relationships have been known to last over 20 years. So I think that we can actually learn something from the Kiwis here. So now we live in such a busy world and for the Kiwi, for them, maybe they live in a very busy world as well. And the Kiwi makes time for their partner no matter what's going on. If they got a lot of stuff on their grub eating schedule, they will always still have time to see their significant others on a schedule. So I think that's, that's very cool. So kiwis are omnivorous. This means that in addition to some vegetation and fruit and things like that, they will also eat worms, wood lice, millipedes, snails, slugs, uh, other kinds of insects in addition to the seeds, berries, and plant material as well. So as we learned earlier, they do have good hearing, and that is because they have big ear openings that provide a very good sense of hearing and long, graceful whiskers and a sensitive bill will help it locate food in the soil and leaf litter. The kiwi chicks are instinctive 
feeders and are not taught by parents to forage for food, so they are born into the world already ready to go. Now this is in vast and stark contrast to us as humans. If we were to turn back the hands of time to when me and you were just little babies, we would not know what to do. We rely entirely on our parents and caretakers to be able to feed us until we're able to feed ourselves much later in life. So we got to give credit to the Kiwi where credit is due. So the biggest threats are ferrets, weasels, and stoats, which will be closely followed by cats and dogs. Only about 5% of all kiwis hatched in the wild will be able to survive until adulthood. But the feather patterns allow the kiwi to protect themselves by disappearing into the dark and fading into the forest vegetation. And when distressed, a kiwi will freeze in order to disguise itself from aerial predators. So movement can be a dead giveaway for some of these predators, and by standing still, they might be able to camouflage themselves among the foliage around them. So the nostrils that the kiwi has can actually be damaging to its possibility of survival. This is because it can sometimes be a bit noisy when it is sniffing its way around. So it will walk around and tap the ground with its bill, probing the soil and sniffing loudly. And some of the predators that would like to have the kiwi for dinner have a very keen sense of hearing, making it not so good for the kiwi to be sniffing all around the place. If you're wondering how long they live, well, when they grow to adulthood, they can live between 25 and 50 years. And due to their size, I would not have imagined this to be the case. So the kiwi may sound very shy, but these birds are actually very territorial. They have razor-sharp claws that can do some damage if applied correctly. According to kiwi researcher, Dr. John McLennan, one great spotted kiwi in North Westland named Pete is infamous for catapulting in for a hit and run. He will belt you in the leg and then run away into the undergrowth. Oh, what a world to be a kiwi researcher being attacked by those you love, particularly Pete. So, kiwis, like Pete, can be territorial and might not be so cuddly as we think. So now I'm going to read a story about kiwis for you guys. So I am trying to implement a new sort of segment on the show where I read you guys something about the animal. And in this case, it is going to be about how New Zealanders got to the point where they are now called kiwis. So before the First World War, the kiwi bird was primarily a representation of New Zealand as a whole, but not its people. That being said, the use of a kiwi as a military symbol can actually be traced as far back as 1866 when it was adopted by the South Canterbury Battalion. In the early 1900s, New Zealanders were largely referred to internationally as a couple of things, including NZers, Maori Landers, and sometimes even fern leaves. And during the First World War, New Zealand soldiers were dubbed Pig Islanders, or diggers, but eventually they became known as kiwis, and this description was believed not to come out of any kind of physical attribute, but rather the stature, 
and good-mannered nature of New Zealand soldiers. The Kiwi was also the nickname of choice for the sole reason that it was unique to the country of New Zealand. And since then, the Kiwi continued to flourish as a local icon. When the first New Zealand currency was released in 1934, the bird became one of its most prominent features. When the first New Zealand currency was released in 1934, the bird became one of its most prominent features, appearing in the two shilling coin as well as the ten shilling and one pound notes. Also, in the 1930s, a campaign from the Department of Health promoting the eating of fruit included a poster aimed at the healthy kiwi. New Zealanders were once again being described as kiwis in the international stage once the Second World War came around, a nickname that was greatly welcomed by all soldiers except for aspiring airmen, mostly because of the flightless bird connotation. The armed forces rugby team, which successfully toured Britain after the war, was also known as the Kiwis. So that is a very cool little history lesson as to how the Kiwi became applied to New Zealanders as a whole. Now, if any of you listeners out there are from New Zealand and you think that some of this information is inaccurate or you have your own sort of take on it, please send me an email, write me a message, and I will correct it on the next episode. For the last fact of the show, we are just going to go over the name Kiwi. Where does it come from? Well, it comes from the Maori word for kiwi, which is said to be of imitative origin, meaning that it doesn't come from something like two different root words that form kiwi, but rather it could have been something like people heard the kiwi and imitated it in this way, and this is the word that they came up with. I have to say that this was just a very, very fun and interesting episode. I learned so much, and I hope you did too. If you want to learn more about animal facts and more in depth about the mechanisms that they use, you can go to listenable.io and there you can research Relax with Animal Facts and you can find my course on Listenable. And if you do decide to sign up for a seven day free trial, use the code Stefan Wolf and you will get a discount as well as that trial. If you have trouble finding the website, it is on my website, Relax with Animal Facts, under the tab Listenable. I would like to thank each and every one of you that leave five-star reviews as well as follow the show on Spotify and those of you that listen to the show. I am so grateful to have your support and to be able to host this show every week. If you would like to support the show financially, you can do so on the Patreon. That tab is available on relaxwithanimalfacts.com. You can donate $1 a month or $2 a month just to help pay for the show and keep it running. For those of you that are already supporters of the show and already patrons, you have my sincere and heartfelt gratitude. If you want to hear an animal on the podcast, go ahead and send an email to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com or send a message to relaxwithanimalfacts on Instagram. I hope you guys enjoyed the show as much as I did. I hope to see you on the next podcast episode with the next animal. Take care.